I want to talk about the wedding kit from Lumoid.com. Now, a few days ago, I teased on Instagram two big white boxes with the Lumoid logo on it and said, everything you need to tackle a wedding. And asked people to guess what was inside. Well, it didn't take many guesses for folks. In fact, it was the first comment said, 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200. That's how well known, and 5D Mark III, that's how well known this kit is um, as the appropriate gear to tackle a wedding. Let's talk in a little bit more detail about each of these items, how I use it, why it's perfect for tackling a wedding, um, and why if you're not shooting with gear like this, some of the options you have for starting to shoot with gear like this. All right, so first thing that we're gonna talk about are the lenses. So we've got two L-class lenses here. This is Canon's professional level lenses. Uh, really nice, built like tanks, very solid, weather sealed. Both of them are constant f2.8 apertures. So that means as you zoom from 24 to 70 with the 24 to 70, you have f2.8 across that range. And the same with the 70 to 200, f2.8 across that range. Let's talk in a little bit more detail about the 70 to 200. Uh, just, well, let, let's get a downside out of the way. It's the only downside, really. It's heavy. Uh, it's about three pounds. So you're gonna need to start bulking up at the gym if you're gonna be carrying this around a lot. Switches on the side here. Let's run down real quick through these. It's got a focus limiter that allows you, if you're focusing on mostly stuff further away, uh, to say two and a half meters to infinity only. That helps the focus be a little bit faster as it doesn't have to search over the entire range. Close focusing capabilities are about a meter away. Autofocus or manual focus. Now, one of the nice things about both of these lenses is that they are full-time manual focus. So if you focus in on something and you need to tweak that just a little bit, you just grab the wheel, no messing with a switch. So mine leaves, uh, mine stays on autofocus all the time. You've got image stabilization up to four stops, and that's really nice as you're shooting out there at f, or sorry, out there at uh, 200 millimeters. Um, you can use that image stabilization to drop your shutter speed a little bit and do well in low light. And that, with the f 2.8 and the image stabilization, this is a wonderful lens for shooting in low light situations. And there aren't too many telephoto lenses that you could say about that. It also has two modes for that image stabilization. You got your normal mode, and then you have two for panning. That's more for your sports. The lens is smart enough to know that you're moving side to side, uh, and it adjusts its image stabilization not to try to counteract that um, and to give you sharp images. Quick tip, if you're using a tripod during the wedding at all, you wanna make sure that it is, uh, you're, using, you're mounting it on this tripod collar right here, which gives you a nice stable point because this is, in fact, heavier than a camera. Um, and you ought to want, also want to make sure that your image stabilization is turned off, but that screws on right there and stays on nice and tight. That also is a place where you can mount the rapid strap as well to give it a little bit more of a balanced approach. They are both weather sealed. One of the nice things as you zoom with the 7200 is all of the focusing and the zoom is internal. Notice there's no movement anywhere except the ring as I'm zooming. It's all internal in there, which helps keep it weather sealed. We can get fancy and talk about the glass inside, the ultra dispersion, ultra low dispersion, and the fluorite coatings. But let me just tell you that really what it translates into with both the 70 to 200 and 24 to 70 is fantastic contrast, colors, and clarities. It's dangerous if you put these on the camera for the first time and then look at the pictures and then compare it to whatever you've been shooting with. The difference is noticeable, not just in the sharpness, uh, but really the richness of the colors and the contrast straight out of the camera when you're using these two lenses and the other L-class lenses as well. Uh, it's just really fantastic. With these expensive lenses, they come with nice lens hoods, and you want to make sure that those are on most of the time so you're protecting the end of the lens, and it also blocks stray light and things like that from getting in there. So it's really nice, and then also you can kind of just put it down in the bag like so and not worry about it as much. The 24 to 70, very similar in a lot of respects to the 70 to 200 very sharp. One of the nice things about both of these lenses is, yes, they're at f2.8, and yes, you can shoot wide open without worrying about getting soft images. All the way out to the edges, these lenses are sharp. When you shoot with uh, cheaper lenses, or uh, let's say more affordable prime lenses that maybe go to f1.4, you often can't really reliably shoot at f1.4. It just not doesn't give you the sharpest, and you need to stop down a little bit to get to that. 
These lenses, you don't. You really can shoot at f2.8. Uh, focus indicator on both of these lenses, I didn't mention that. The 24 to 70 doesn't have image stabilization, and I hear people complain about that every once in a while. But really, at f2.8 and being able to shoot at 24 millimeters, your, your shutter speeds, most of the time, if you're photographing a wedding, are going to need to be faster than that anyway to capture the uh, subjects moving in sharp. Uh, sharp images. And image stabilization really doesn't help you capture moving subjects. So I, I don't find that a big deal, plus it would get heavier. And right now it's a good weight and balances really nicely with the 70, or the, uh, the 5D Mark III. Um, and there are third-party makers that make image stabilization for 24 to 70s. I've had really bad experience with those. There's plenty of people that have good experience, but I'm just really happy with that. And um, it's just a great lens. It's also the lens that I use along with the 5D Mark III to shoot all of my review videos including this one right here. So we're really approaching this as a wedding photography kit because that's what it's billed as but think bigger folks because there are a lot of different options you can do uh, with this setup. So let's stick that there. Um, oh and really minor but worth mentioning the pinch caps. I'm so glad everybody's using these now. All right so Yes, the lenses are great, but you need to pair it with something that is going to be capable of making it through a wedding day um, and whatever kind of the weather throws at you, uh, or if it's a longer day, nice good battery life, and that is the 5D Mark III. So this is not a full review of any of these things, if you couldn't tell that already, but it's really talking about how wonderful these things are for working through a wedding. This is a lovely camera. It feels wonderful in the hand, and it has just a couple of features. It has a lot of features, but a couple of features that I want to touch on um, that really make it nice for getting through the day. So it's really built tough, and it feels that way in the hand. It feels solid. The construction is wonderful. Very, very good. One of the other things that I really like about this camera is, well, it is weather sealed. As I pop this open, there's nice little rubber sealing around that. Um, but you have dual card slots. If we're talking about capturing something as special as a wedding, you've got these critical moments, these irreplaceable moments during the day. And it's really nice. Card failure is rare, but it is nice to be have the option to be writing the images you're taking to two cards at the same time. And if for some reason one card becomes corrupted or has a meltdown or you lose it, that's a really bad thing, um, you have a backup as you're shooting. That's nice. The other thing that I really like about this camera is you've got full manual control with two dials for uh, your shutter speed and your aperture. So there's no fiddling with any buttons to change those. And one press of the button and a turn of the dial across here gives you the rest of all the other kind of settings that you often need to change your drive mode from servo as the bride and, and uh, groom are walking down the aisle to keep them in focus to your one shot when you're just photographing the groups. Um, your drive, did I say your autofocus mode? Your drive mode, for the most part, I use the higher speed shutter. It's going to sound a little funny with the uh, lens cap on, but you can hear that it's a little bit quieter. I like to shoot my weddings in kind of an unobtrusive way. Um, and so that's one of the things that helps stay a little bit quieter. So that is your normal uh, speed mode. And there's even a little bit of a higher speed too. It's certainly fast. I wouldn't call it a speed demon. There are faster cameras, but it's fast enough and a buffer big enough to capture your important moments during the wedding as well. Three custom modes on the dial. I think that's important too. You can set up this camera really tweak it the way you want um, and then when you spin back to those save those and when you spin back to them on the dial you have all of the options back there as well. One quick tip is there's some customizable controls to this camera as well as that dial there is this back joystick here can be used for navigating the Q menu but it can also be used for uh, setting your focus points um, and use this button right here to move your center focus point off the center. And so very quickly, you can choose the focus point you want to use. And if you need to get back into the center, just a single press straight down on this joystick will, let you to do, will allow you to do that. And that's a nice feature um, of this camera. And a couple other, I personally uh, use the set button as the magnify button as well. And so it really becomes a one-handed operation. I don't need to spend any time over here on these buttons once I have the camera dialed in and shooting the way I want. And that's nice. Keeps the other hand on the lens um, and I can do everything I want back here. 
Let's go back to the lenses for just a second because I did want to say, um, you know, when during the wedding, the whole day, do I use these different lenses or how do I use them? And it might be pretty clear, but you know, the 70 to 200 is probably on my camera for most of the day. Uh, it doesn't start there. I start with the 24 to 70. The picture, my job usually is to get the picture of the guys getting ready. Um, you know, they do this in a variety of venues, hotel rooms, uh, family homes, uh, and usually those rooms aren't very big. And so having the flexibility to uh, go as wide as 24 if you need to, and but still have the ability to go to 70 at f2.8 to make some really nice portraits of the groom. If I have time to take them outside and take some photographs, switch over to the 70 to 200, go up to 100 to 200, and stay at f2.8, and you can get some amazing shallow depth of field, really isolate your subject from the background, really nice pictures. 24 to 70 comes back onto the lens uh, during dancing um, and kind of the general reception and also using it for the bigger group photos as well. Um, that works. 70 to 200 is on my camera for almost all of the ceremony. Again, there are some photographers and you maybe even saw that viral video where there was a photographer right behind the uh, priest, reverend, officiant. He did not take kindly to that. I do not like to be that involved in the ceremony. I'm really not part of the ceremony. I'm there to capture it. And using the 70 to 200 allows you to stay on the fringes, but still really get these amazingly close pictures like you are there. Um, and I really love hearing the comments from people afterwards that said, I didn't even notice you taking pictures today. Did you take pictures? And you can assure them you did. And we run a little slideshow during the reception usually. And, they're quite impressed because they didn't notice us. Um, the exchange of the rings, the emotion as you, as you look at the parents, so you move forward a little bit and get the parents as they start to tear up and put the tissue to their eye, all of that can be captured so nicely with the 70 to 200. And then during the reception, during speeches, you know, the, again, a lot of emotion and you can be out of the way but still really get in nice and close and tight. And I'll sometimes use this during the uh, father-daughter dances and the mother-son dances, again, to really capture uh, that. And then throw the 24 to 70 on and get more of the bigger picture of everybody watching and enjoying this moment as well. So, and as I said, we've really been focusing on weddings, but this can be a very capable sports photography machine. There is an incredible customizable autofocus system within the 5D Mark III that is quite capable of photographing fast moving objects, kids on the track, um, what have you. And with the 24 to 7, or sorry, the 70 to 200, you can do a great, great job of that. And I mentioned the video as well. Fantastic video camera. Really, it was kind of groundbreaking when it first came out. And it still is the go-to choice for many videographers. Um, and when I'm shooting a wedding for video, it is a 5D Mark III that I'm using, and as I said, all of these reviews I shoot, 5D Mark III and a 24 to 70 as well. Let's just quick over the a little other bits. You got the nice big LPE6 battery that comes um, with the uh, package and a battery charger. It charges up fast. The battery lasts. It should last you through a wedding. It's not always. It's not bad to have a backup idea though or backup battery. Um, SD card reader and the a 32 gigabyte SD card, and again. So now, buying all of this stuff outright would not be cheap. It would be more than my car costs. I don't have a very fancy car. But if you're serious about photography, if you're serious about event photography, wedding photography, I think you owe it to your clients to start working towards getting gear like this because you are going to be able to create better images in all kinds of situations. A lot of people write me and ask about wedding photography, the low light church, really low light receptions, what they call kind of romantic or I don't know what the other terms they use. You know what I call it? I call it dark and really dark. And having equipment like this, 5D, or the 5D Mark III with a really high ISOs that you can shoot at, I didn't even mention that, but of course the quality out of this camera and the high ISOs you can go to um, is really wonderful that f2.8, all of that is really nice. So what I suggest if you don't, can't afford outright is start renting this gear, 
build that rental cost into the cost you're charging your clients. Again, you're going to be able to create better images. That's going to be able to create more work for you as people see these images in your gallery. Um, and then one of the really nice things, if you're renting from Lumoid, which I recommend because they're good folks, um, is, I don't know why I'm holding up the SD card, because it's got their logo on it, uh, is you can put part of your rental fees towards purchasing these items down the road. You earn credits towards purchasing. So it's really nice. You're building this into your cost. You're earning credits towards buying. And eventually you're going to start owning some of these pieces. Now maybe you own one or two or all of this. Uh, also think about having backup cameras. It's really important. I've mentioned this before in my podcast and in my other wedding tip videos where if you're showing up with only one camera to a wedding day, just like I was talking about having an, a backup to the SD for your, your um, memory cards, what if something goes terribly wrong with your camera and in the middle of the day you are left with no way to capture these people's precious, irreplaceable moments? So you want to think about renting as a backup solution as well. So I think that's a mostly cheery note to end on. I feel like I was a little doom and gloom there, but really, you should have backups. So this is the wedding kit from lumoid.com, but as I said, think bigger, video, events. Uh, this is everything you need to tackle just about any situation uh, with grace. Sure, all right? Thanks so much for watching, and if you've got any questions you wanna check out this kit, look right down below. There is a link to go check out this from lumoid.com. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe.